Hey guys, Nick here, and today I'll be doing an installation and setup of the Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD. So first off, you want to disconnect your computer and take out the side panel. Next, you want to make sure you have an open PCI Express slot. Um, X1 is the minimum, but you can have a bigger one. This here is a PCI, this white one here, is a PCI Express X1 slot. I do have one open and it's right in front of the intake for my uh, for my video card but um, I've had the Avermedia HD DVR there for a while hasn't caused any problems um, I get generally cool temperatures around 70 degrees under uh, maximum load so you need an open PCI Express slot there so now this connection here is the part that goes in the PCI Express X1 slot now this really isn't that difficult and you shouldn't be too worried about putting this in. Um, it's a little difficult to do with one hand though, so bear with me. Um, you can see there, the card's not in all the way yet, just going to press it down and uh, it's now in. Um, if you have a panel here, usually you can just like take out a screw and pull it out or peel it out. Just push out these uh, plates here and then screw it in place and you're good to go. So you can now see the Avermedia card in the back of my computer. So I've got my Xbox here to show you the connection. It's uh, fairly simple. Um, essentially all you want to do is connect an HDMI cable to your Xbox and then the other end of it goes in the card. Now the issue here is that uh, the display will come on your computer monitor through the capture card. And the issue with this is that there is a lot of input lag, enough input lag that um, you can't really play the game. Um, if you're playing any sort of game that requires timing or anything, it will be very difficult. So to do this, you're going to have to split the signal, send one, one signal directly to your monitor or television, and then the other signal directly to the capture card um, so that you get no input lag. Now, to do this, you need an HDMI splitter. Right now, I have a non-powered HDMI cable or HDMI splitter, which is essentially this here has um, this end here, which goes into the HDMI port on the Xbox, and then this end here, which has two female um, HDMI connections. One of which I can plug directly into the computer; the other one can go into the monitor. Um, now, most people do recommend that you get a powered HDMI splitter, which I have ordered um, just recently. And uh, yeah, but just just so that you know, the non-powered HDMI splitter does work, um, or at least with a 720p signal. I have not tested a 1080p signal. Most people do recommend that you get a powered HDMI splitter, which generally costs around 20 to 30 dollars. So it's not a really big expense, and it will help you play without input lag. Now, if you're on PS3, or you just want to use component cables. Um, then I will show you how to do the component cable connection. Um, so you have this adapter here, which uh, obviously you just connect with one hand the cables, which I have magically done. <laughs> and uh, then you just plug this into the card itself. Um, now one thing you're going to notice here is, how does the audio get in? Well, for that they have provided this, which you will have to connect to the red and white cables for audio, which has been magically done. Um, so now you'll have to plug this into your sound card or just the mic port on your computer. So uh, generally the pink one represents the microphone and then you'll have to configure that as the line in um, audio source for your Xbox or whatever. Um, so this will also work about the same if you're using VGA, you want to play on VGA, then uh, you'll have to do that as well. Also, if you're playing on component or VGA, you will also need either a component splitter or a VGA splitter. And I will try and find splitters and put links in the description um, from like Amazon or Newegg or wherever so that you guys can get those. Okay, so you need to do a few things on your Xbox before we get started here. So you want to press the guide button, go over to settings, system settings, um, and console settings. If you go here and click display, um, there's a couple of things to make sure you have set. First of all, make sure that display discovery is disabled. This really confuses the device when you have an HDMI splitter because you have two displays and it doesn't know what to do. Um, HDMI color space, 
I have it just set to RGB. Um, you could do auto. I don't think that really makes a huge difference. Um, reference levels depends on your display. Uh, I have it set to expanded. Um, HDTV settings, you want to make sure it's set to 1080p. Um, now in terms of audio, digital output, um, if you're using 5.1 because you have a 5.1 surround sound or a headset that supports 5.1, then you're going to have to follow these steps for running a line into your computer um, using the Xbox audio adapter or whatever because this will not support 5.1 audio over HDMI. Now you'll want to go to Aver Media's website and download the driver and application for the Game Broadcaster HD C127. Um, link to this site will be in the description. You can go download the, uh, the driver and the um, application. Okay, so once you download and install the application and driver, you'll get this shortcut on your desktop. You want to click that. Um, when you first open it up, it'll ask you about setup. Just pretty much click next for everything. Um, then you want to go here to your settings, um, capture, configure input source, configure recording, and you get these options for um, your recording codecs, formats, um, and whatnot. Uh, so you get MPEG-2 AVX. AVI, WMA, WMV, H.264, iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV. I'm pretty sure these will just be like more MP4s. Um, so I tried these all out. If you go into AVI, the, the bad thing about this is it doesn't detect any codecs. Um, I, I had this issue before with Avery Media software. They don't like codecs with AVI, which is disappointing because um, you can't really use it. Like I suppose if you have a RAID or a solid state, you could try uh, try recording uncompressed, but that doesn't really work well. Um, MPEG-2, for this program, MPEG-2 works the best. Um, there used to be this issue where if you rendered the video in Sony Vegas, you would get audio lag. The audio would go out of sync at the end, but I, rend er, I uh, recorded a six minute clip, rendered that, and there was no audio lag at all. So I'm assuming that that issue is fixed. Uh, these are the settings I was using. Um, so that, that works fairly well. Uh, I tried H.264, um, but its max bit rate is 15 megabits per second, so 15,000 kilobit per second, and uh, I found that the quality wasn't really that great um, as compared to the MPEG-2 with double the bit rate. Um, so you get bigger files, but you also get better quality. Um, now if you click Home, go to Capture, and uh, your source is obviously HDMI here. You can switch it to D-Sub, which is VGA or component. Um, and you press Control r to record, or I believe uh, this button that says record here. So that's it works fairly well, I'd say. So if you're happy with the quality of the MPEG-2 and you don't intend to do any live streaming in the future, then you can probably stop watching here. Uh, make sure to check out the unboxing and the review. But if you intend to um, do any live streaming or you want better quality videos, um, then in the description of this video there will be a link to Amarec TV. Go there, download that, install the live application, and uh, run it. So I already have my Amarec TV configured. If you want to configure it, just press C. It will open up the config. Uh, make sure you select Avermedia HD Capture, Serial Digital if you're using HDMI, RGB for VGA or Component. Uh, make sure you have this selected 1920, 1080, 2997, YUI2. Um, and since, you're, since I'm using 5.1 audio because of my Astros, uh, this will not take a 5.1 audio signal. So I have a line-in running for uh, my Xbox. If you're just using standard 2.1 audio, then you just use Avermedia HD Capture for audio, um, then you can select this for live, make sure this is enabled if you want to do live streaming. Um, I have a more in-depth video on this uh, program which I'll link in the description. For recording, um, if you go to update codec list, click other codec, you want to get an MJPEG codec. You'll have to get that on your own. Um, they are paid codecs, so if you want to do that, uh, this is the best quality recording you can get. If so, um, I use the PIC Video MJPEG codec. That is the best codec you can get. Um, I'll show you the settings here uh, that I use, and this gives really good quality for around 50 megabits per second, and it works really well for editing. 
and then uncompressed audio to not give you errors. For some reason, MP3 gives errors for uh, for audio. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You can set hotkeys, play around with this. This one, this one definitely works the best uh, for recording for any device, really. Now one last thing I'm going to do is show you how to set up the Leiden audio um, if you're using Aver Media Center. Um, now if you go to Capture, Configure Input Source, Configure Audio Source, it won't be named Xbox Leiden, I renamed that myself, but it'll be something like Leiden, uh, mine's Realtek High Definition Audio. So you want to select the, the line in for your audio source if you're using 5.1 sound um, so that you can record it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching guys, please like the video if you enjoyed, and uh, subscribe for some more. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope I could help out. Um, if you're interested in the card, make sure to check out the review as well as the unboxing of the card. Um, once again, thanks for watching guys, please like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for some more, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.